Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to show you today how you can take the same chords that most tutorials use and come up with ideas yourself. I'll most likely give you ideas you've heard in songs before, therefore, when you hear them again, you'll have that recollection of already learning how the parts go. Then you can start to learn a lot of these songs on your own. The goal should be to get you to where you can become self-sufficient in learning most things. Let's start out with basic chords. That's going to be G, C, D, E minor. But I'm going to show you the different ways we can play those chords and do various rhythms and little acoustic licks that you would be likely to hear in song. So if we have this first real basic chord, G, this is old school G, then we're going to go C, regular open C, D, and then we're going to go E minor. When you are playing these shapes, no matter what fret you're on, we're still going to call them the same thing, G, C, D, and E minor. If I keep on fret 7, we're still going to call them that, even though we know that the sound is going to be different. So let me put a beat on, and I will play through those chords. So we have G, C, D, E minor. Let's start to throw rhythm into it. I'll do both pick style and finger style. Let's start with finger style. C, D, E minor. So that had a little syncopation in it, meaning the second strike of the chord was on an upbeat. So it's down, up, down, up, down, Strong version. So that's a very, very basic way to play those four chords. I rarely play those chords in that more what I call an old school manner. However, there are certain songs that will come up that will require you to play those forms. Let me go to the extreme opposite of that, and that's going to be these chords, G, Super G. I call it the lockdown position. C add 9. D, E minor. As you can see, these two fingers do not move from their location on string 2, fret 3, and on string 1, fret 3. Finger style, you would probably do more of a bounce technique or a tap technique. Let's go ahead and do that with a beat. D, E minor. Now I'm going to switch bass notes a little bit. Sixth string, fifth string, fifth string, fourth string. Stay on fourth, and then sixth, fifth, E minor. So let me run through it again. Watch my thumb. I'll repeat G. Basically, what that's doing is just changing your bass line, makes it more interesting. Now C. Now C. Same effect. As you can see, it's the same effect. Now D, we're going to stay on. I'll do it again. Now E, sixth string the fifth. Now let's do the pick.
Now check this out, when I do G, I'm going to strike six strings and then five. Like that. This is not necessary, I'm just starting to add things to the sound. C, it's fifth string to fourth. That's the bass note. Let me do a full chord. Now D, we stay on the same chord. Now on, on D, we stay on the same bass string. Even though we can move, obviously. Now E minor, six, five, again. Now let me free it up. to simplify your chords but make the sound cooler. Sometimes less is more in guitar. You're never going to compete with a piano because they have 10 fingers and 88 keys. On the guitar, the best way to make your parts pop out is to, believe it or not, play fewer notes. So listen to this little vibe here with G, C, and D. And I will come back and show you the forms. Now watch me go up for D. So I played the G, C major 7, we could call this D6-9, so that's 4, we have the added 6th, and the added ninth. that would be D6-9, or D sus 4 6 9 many things you could call this, D11, 6-9, for now I'll just call it D and know that it's going to work, it's an altered form of this. When you listen to those at first, it seems like, hmm, that's not going to work, but it does in context. For E minor, you 
really have a couple options. You could go third string, third fret. Makes it an E minor seven. You could go the first string, third fret with your pinky or third. I like my pinky because it's easier to reach. So let me play that again with the beat one more time. Okay, listen to my count on two and four. One, two, three, four. Two, four. One, two, three, four. Two, four. One, two, three, four. Two, four. Two, four. Two, four. Think of the back beat. Think of this beat. Two, four. One, two. The strong part of the beat is on two and four. Two, two, four. So that's where you want your taps. It's very important to remember, no matter what you do, in terms of your playing, if you're doing the tap technique, the tap has to be there. There are exceptions. There are times where you may be doing something so complex that there's no way to get the tap in. But for the most part, most of the music I've seen done by players who do a lot of tapping and some pretty technical stuff while they're tapping, they try as much as possible to keep the tap in there. Let me run one more thing by you. That's this sound with the tap technique. Basically, it's one, two, three, four. Think of that. 